What is the Bible? Dogmas? Ancient myths? Has it been changed over time? If the Bible's not true, then why are so many convinced of its veracity? In Jesus' time, most of the Bible already existed. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? Are Jesus' words true? Does the Bible foretell of him and his crucifixion? One of the earliest stories in the Bible is Cain and Abel. As the story goes, Cain murders his brother Abel. Why does this matter? There were many ancient murders. What's special about this one? The Bible says that Cain murdered Abel because of jealousy. That Cain was angry because God favored Abel's offering over his own. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock, and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. A skeptical mind might question this. Why would an all-powerful God favor one sacrifice over another? Further, why would God even want a sacrifice? If God created the animals, and the plants, and the soil, and the sun, then who is man to offer him anything? Doesn't God already own the things he's being given? Such reasonings are important to the prophecy of Cain and Abel. The problem isn't that Cain's vegetables have dirt on them. The problem is with Cain's heart. Cain is a poser. He's doing something that he thinks is right, but he doesn't understand why. Cain believes in God enough to offer a sacrifice, but his faith isn't genuine. Cain's conception of God is superficial. He thinks that the sacrifice is just a bribe and that God is vulgar enough to accept it. Whereas Abel's sacrifice looks forward to the blood of Christ, and is a recognition of our fallen nature, Cain's offering is a quid pro quo. Cain's sacrifice is an attempt to bribe his way into heaven, and thus he drives God away from him. Cain is the first hypocrite. He worships God out of tradition, not faith. He does something that he thinks is holy, but he doesn't know the truth behind it. When God rejects him, Cain's anger and jealousy lead to murder. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother, and slew him. As theologian John Gill writes, sacrifices were of divine institution, and were very early types of Christ, and that there always were two sorts of worshippers, spiritual and carnal ones whom God can distinguish. Cain's descent into sin foreshadows the gospel of Christ. Jesus was born into a faithless and fallen nation under a corrupted church. He describes them as being a wicked generation who praised God with their lips, but their hearts were far from him. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones 
and of all uncleanness. God spoke to the people by his prophets about the pure offering. But the crowd didn't listen. They even made offerings that symbolized the blood of Christ himself, but didn't see the meaning of them. The religious hierarchy betrayed and crucified Christ because he was from God and his miracles were real. Like Cain's motive, the murder of Christ was an act of jealousy. But Pilate answered them, saying, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priest had delivered him for envy. Cain was an older sibling whose worship was empty and rejected by God. He was jealous of Abel and hated him because of his righteousness. Thus the murder of Abel, written many hundreds of years before the event, is a messianic prophecy, confirming the testimony of Scripture. What should be apparent to both the skeptical and religious mind is how could a story written down many hundreds of years before a fact so perfectly foreshadow it? Even more significant, why would such a story be preserved by a nation if that story prophesies its own spiritual estrangement from God? Mm -hmm. 